Two blocks from the National Mall, construction crews move quickly on this eight-story building, the Museum of the Bible. You're standing in the grand entranceway. Our visitors will come through those doors right down there. From the Jerusalem marble on the floors and walls to the designs on floating stairs connecting each floor, Executive Director Tony Zeiss says every detail involves biblical writings. Half of this museum is the Hebrew Bible because Old Testament and then, of course, uh, the New Testament. The driving force behind the museum, Hobby Lobby founder Steve Green. He envisioned a place where people can immerse themselves in the Bible and visit the places where Jesus and the prophets lived. And so it's as close to what the real thing was in the first century as possible. It's amazing. And so we're excited about it. We will have uh, living actors in here. Actors will play out biblical scenes in areas now covered in construction dust. Murals show you where Jesus lived. This is the Sea of Galilee, and we're standing just a little bit west of where the, Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount. Making the Nazareth village seem real is native Tulsan Jonathan Martin. And to give people uh, the best representation of uh, the, the world that Jesus would have lived in. The ORU graduate flew to Nazareth to see it firsthand, returning with impressions and pictures he's using to make the scriptures live, spending endless hours painting every blade of grass perfectly. You want to do this as unto the Lord and, you know, uh, Jesus' hometown, we better get it right. Only it's not just art. 100 scholars from around the world help ensure everything is authentic. Every single exhibit here has a team of scholars that are experts in their field. So not only do we hope to be really entertaining, but absolutely academically sound in everything we do here. Shannon Bennett was the first to be hired for the museum that reveals the Bible's impact on mankind, the content and the history. And then this floor is the history floor. And this is where we learn about how the Bible came to be, how it's been translated, transmitted throughout time and cultures and languages. With the help of a half billion dollars in private donations, 42 million spent on technology alone, chapters from the Bible will play out on stage two in a theater inspired by the tabernacle. And then the icing on the cake is really in what we can do with it. So we've digitally mapped the walls. So depending on what's going on on the stage, we can completely immerse our guests in that. The plans are set and crews work feverishly to finish. Exhibit areas uh, from the Vatican, exhibit areas from the Israeli Antiquities Authority. Uh, people all over the world know that this is happening and they want to be a part of it. While there was trouble with U.S. Customs over paperwork on millions in artifacts, there is still plenty to see, like this brick from an ancient temple Dr. Zeiss had tucked in his file cabinet. And it's a clay brick and it's been around since 536 B.C. So a lot of those images are from that. As for Jonathan, opening day is drawing near, November 17th. He's anxious for his family back home in Tulsa to see his work and the museum that brings the Bible to life. It's huge. It's uh, the, the highest honor so far. So it's just amazing. And uh, for us to be involved, it, we're pinching ourselves every day.